The latest update to Autodesk PowerMill includes numerous improvements to setups. The addition of new options to manage stock and clamp entities helps to simplify the creation of machining operations. With the addition of setups, PowerMill offers a new tab in the ribbon labelled Setup. Through the new tab, you have multiple options. Let's look at each option individually. You have options to create new setups or activate existing setups. A simple way to edit the active setup settings or stock. Add the active setup to the active NC program or create a brand new NC program from the setup. You can activate the active setups work plane which helps when keeping your work planes consistent to a setup when creating a toolpath. Finally, we have the last few options which allows you to display or not to display your setup stock with a nice opacity slide bar. You can also view all the clamps or all the toolpaths within the setups. Let's start by looking at a setup. You'll notice the Setups dialog box has been enhanced to include multiple tabs that provide quick access to settings including work plane, stock, toolpaths, notes and a new clamp entity. Let's consider each of these tabs in more detail, starting with work plane. The work plane tab allows users to define which work plane will be used for this specific setup. The tab allows you to select existing work planes or create a new one. Note that this work plane will be applied to all toolpaths created within this setup. The next tab provides tools to manage the stock material for the setup. The tab provides controls to allow you to define the stock size and shape using similar commands to those provided in PowerMill's block form. As with work planes, the stock can be defined for the entire setup and is automatically synchronized with all toolpaths created within it. By default, the setup stock is displayed using a yellow colour to make it easier to differentiate it from the standard power mill block. A handy light bulb icon also allows the stock to be drawn or undrawn if necessary. The next tab in the setup settings interface relates to clamp entities. Here it is possible to select model entities to represent clamps and then assign appropriate clearance and collision parameters to them. Notice now once a clamp is assigned via a tick box, they will be drawn to show you which clamps have been selected. You can see that the form works in a similar way to PowerMill's toolpath thickness preferences. Looking at the top of this page, you can see that the clearance for the clamps can be set. The lower section of the page allows the clamp models to be selected. Once defined, these thickness preferences will be applied to any toolpaths that are created within the setup. Clamps can be imported into the setup by using the shortcut icon labelled Import Clamp Model. Clicking this icon displays a form that allows the relevant clamp CAD model to be selected. The Clamp Import menu recognises the same CAD file formats that can be imported into PowerMill as normal models. When working with older projects that contain clamps on existing levels, these can be converted into clamps. By selecting the level with the right mouse button and choosing Convert Level to Clamp. The last thing to note is that clamps can be imported via the Backstage view under File, Import, Clamp. Importing via the Backstage view automatically defines your fixture model as a clamp rather than a machinable model, adding it into the active setup to speed up part programming. Let's now look at the Toolpath tab. This tab now provides a visual list of toolpaths contained within the setup. The tab provides tick boxes to control whether to include or omit certain toolpaths. Particularly useful if you want to keep a toolpath within the setup but not include it within your NC program that you then export. The other option allows you to change the number of times a given toolpath will be repeated within the setup. Useful in situations where you wish to repeat a toolpath but do not want to create unnecessary duplicates of the toolpath. For example, running a finishing spring cut to remove material left on by cutter deflection. The final tab allows the addition of user-defined notes. 
These are particularly useful and allow information to be added and shared with other CAM programmers that may have access to the project at a later date. OK, let's finish off by creating a quick toolpath within the setup. Let's use a simple end mill and use a 2D curve profile toolpath strategy. From the toolpath settings, select the block settings. Note the option to use the setup stock. This causes PowerMill to update the toolpath to use the stock that was defined in the setup previously. Next, let's go to the Home tab in the ribbon and navigate to the Component Thickness Shortcut icon. If you scroll to the bottom of the form, you can see that the clamps have automatically been added and updated with the clearance values set that were defined in the setup earlier by allowing the toolpath to inherit the key settings form of the setup, you will have greater confidence that the stock and clamp clearance settings will be consistent across this and any other subsequent toolpaths. The enhancements to setups with an Autodesk PowerMill provide greater confidence in managing stock whilst also introducing the ability to better manage clamps and fixtures. These help to simplify the creation of complex machining operations, saving you precious time and effort.